Hi, this is Methat al Masri. Today I'm going to give you a quick introduction into Flutter. What is Flutter? Flutter is Google's UI toolkit for building beautiful natively compiled applications for mobile, Android, and iOS, as well as web and desktop applications. You can build these applications from a single code base. So today we're going to look at using Flutter for building mobile applications. So the same code base that we have, you can use it for both Android and iOS. Now there are other solutions out there. Among them are React Native from Facebook, and there is Apache Cordova, Ionic Framework, and Xamarin from Microsoft. Flutter uses a language called Dart, and Dart is a programming language made by Google. It is optimized for building user interfaces. Dart, when used in web applications, is transpired to JavaScript, so it runs on all web browsers. If you want more information, you can go to dart.dev. The first step is to install Flutter. So go to this site here and install Flutter. When you install Flutter, it's going to also install the Dart language. You can install it for either Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. I am on a Mac. One thing you need to know is that if you're developing for iPhone, you must have a Mac. That's not true about Android. You can develop applications for Android using any operating system. After you install Flutter, you can execute this command in a terminal window, Flutter Doctor. And this will tell you whether or not your installation of Flutter is correct and if anything is missing. In this case, you can see that most of them are checks, but there's a warning here saying some Android license is not accepted. I'm not going to bother with this. This is just a warning. I'm on a Mac. So if I want to start the iPhone simulator, I can enter this command. Open minus A simulator. And this should open up my iPhone simulator. And here it is. Let me create a simple Flutter application. I can do that from the command line. I can enter Flutter, create, and let's say I want my application to be called Flutter 101. I hit enter here and it creates for me the Flutter application. Now to run it, I can go into this directory that it created, which is Flutter 101. And in here, I can simply run the application by typing in Flutter run and that will run the application in the emulator. And you get a very simple application here that if you click on the button, it will increment the number that you see in the center of the screen. This is a very simple application. Now, it's written here. If you want help, you can hit H if you want to detach D and if you want to quit Q. So I'm going to quit. So I'm going to hit Q here and it's going to quit the application and return you back to the prompt. I'm going to show you how you can use VS Code to edit a Flutter application. VS Code is free of charge and it's a very, very popular editor. If you don't have it, you can go and download it from this site. I've already got it. So I'm going to open code by typing in code in a terminal window and it will open for me VS Code. Now I can go to View, Command Palette, and enter Flutter here. And when you enter Flutter, it will suggest to you if you want to create a new project. So I'm going to create a new project. Let me call this project My App. And it will ask me, where do you want the parent directory to be? So I'm going to choose this to be my parent directory and select folder. So it's going to create for me a Flutter application and put it in that folder. Let me expand this and put my emulator on the right hand side here. Now the main file is this main.dart. This is my application. You can see here that the main method you could say is to run my app. And this is my app. This is the entry point into my application. The main UI for this application is in this build method. 
Let us run this application and see what it does. And you will see that it's similar to what we did before. So I can click on run, start debugging. And there you go. It's the same app. If I click on the button, the number increments, and you can see here that this text you have pushed the button this many times is coming from here. And over here is where the counter is. And this is being incremented. Let's change something here. When you do flutter programming, there is something called hot reload. And that means really that the moment you save something, it immediately updates it. So let's make this uppercase pushed. And I'm going to save. So if I go file, save, you see immediately it updates it to uppercase pushed. Let's add a few widgets here. Let's say I want to add an icon. So I can come here, an icon. There are built-in icons that I can choose from. So let's go icons.airport shuttle. And let's say I want to give this a color. So I can go color and I can choose from a list of colors. And let's say I want light blue. You can see already that we have a, a shuttle, but it's a little bit too small. So I can give it a size. Size, let's say 50. And you can see it became a little bit bigger. So let's add a button. Let's say I want to add a flat button. Every button has to have an on pressed method because buttons are supposed to be pressed. So I can type in here on pressed. In here, we can say that this has an event handler. Whenever this button is pressed, I can type in the console, you pressed the flat button. Since print is a command, you need to terminate it with a semicolon. Let's say we want to give this button a color. So we can go color, colon, colors, and let's give it an orange color. Let it be orange accent. Immediately you can see that the button appears, but it's a little bit odd because it has no text. So we need to give it some texts. I can come in here and say child text, click me, put a comma there. And immediately you can see that you have a click me. Now let's save. And when you click on the button, you can see here that the text you pressed the flat button appears. Let's do something else. This time, let me add an icon button, which is a button that, that's got an icon. And this time I'll use a different style of button called a raised button. And this raised button, it's got an icon. So I can go, I can go dot icon, and then I can put the properties of that icon and put a comma here. Now, the first thing is we need to have an on-pressed handler. I can say that when the button is pressed, it's going to print something. So I'm just going to copy this and bring it down here and say you press the raised button. The next thing is we want an icon. So I can come here and say I want an icon and icons dot mail. That will give me a mail icon. Now, in addition to having an icon, I want it also to have a label, a label colon, and the label will be simply text mail me. You can see that the user interface is changing as I type. This time, let's have a red button. So I can go color.red. Save. You can see that my red button has appeared here with an icon of mail. And if I click on it, it will also display something in the console window. So we've seen that you can create a Flutter application from the command line. You can create a Flutter application from VS Code. The third thing is we're going to create a Flutter application from Android Studio. So let me close VS Code here 
and let me start Android Studio. And here's my Android Studio. As you can see here, there is an option, start a new Flutter project. That is because I added to Android Studio the Flutter plugin. So let's start a Flutter project and I'm going to choose a simple Flutter application. Over here, you get this message saying Flutter SDK path not given. So I'm going to navigate to where my SDK is and I know that it is under my home directory development flutter click on open and that error message has gone away so let's go next here i'll leave the package name as it is and finish so it generates for us the same application that we had before notice here at the top i can either run it in iphone or android let me just stick to iphone let me run this and it should open up the new application over on here and it will look very much like the application that we started with. Let's do a few modifications to this application. Now for beginners, this app is perhaps a little bit too complicated. Let us really simplify it. So I'm going to choose everything, delete, and just paste this. And this is easier to understand. Here, we're scaffolding an app. The app bar has a title, Welcome to Flutter, and the body has a text control that just displays hello world. So now if I save, you will notice that immediately the emulator shows the new state of the application. This body section is where you actually add controls and they would appear in the body section of your mobile app. And this here is the title. Let's see how we can use an external library. So I'm going to use an external library that generates random English words. So you'd go into this file, pubspec.yaml, and under dependencies, I'm going to add the name of a library that I wish to use. And this is the library, English Words version 3.1.0. After you enter the name of the library, you need to click on Packages Get. And this will go and get that package and install it. Now that the package has been installed, I can close this and go to my Dart application. And let me import that package. Come here and declare an instance variable called word pair. And this word pair is just going to call a class in this library. And that class you can call the random method and it will give you a random word. So I can take this here word pair. And instead of displaying text, hello world, I'm going to display word pair and I'll say as Pascal case. The moment I save, you will see immediately it shows a random word. I can, for example, use camel case. And if I save, it will show me camel case. So this is a quick demo on how you can use a library in Dart. Let me run my app in the Android emulator. And you will see now that without any changes, this app also works on Android. As you can see, here is my Android emulator, here's my iOS emulator, and the application performs the same on both. The only reason why these names are different is because this app, it just chooses random names. If you develop an application for the iPhone using Swift, you can only deploy it on the iPhone. If you build an application using Java or Kotlin, you can only use it for Android. Whereas if you develop an application using Flutter, you can run it on Android and iOS. I hope you found this video useful and I hope to see you in future videos. Bye.